thank you for tuning in to today's video. This is an everyday wearable fall look. I'm really, really excited for fall. It's my favorite season of the whole year. Um, all about the scarves and the sweaters and the boots and the leather jackets and pumpkins and leaves and watching Hocus Pocus and just all of those things make me very happy. Um, so I was really excited to finally transition out of summer makeup and into something a little more um, warm for cool weather. That makes sense. Um, so you're gonna see in this look that the whole eye is from a single palette, which makes it very easy to do. Um, all the eyes and the blushes and stuff are all matte, bronzers matte. Um, I kept the skin dewy with a little highlight. The lips have a satin finish. They're not a totally matte lip. Although I am gonna shoot a video that I'll post immediately after this one using this same look, but just changing out the lip colors to kind of show some of my favorite lips uh, going into fall. So I'm going to go through nudes to browns to mauves to berries so you can kind of see a full range. Um, so if you're digging this look and you kind of want to see more with it, then definitely watch the next video that I'm going to post. Um, messy bun, off the shoulder sweater, just kind of getting into the fall transitional um, look. So hopefully you're all as excited as I am and you are, you know, digging this tutorial. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and or subscribe. Let me know what else you guys want to see. I definitely have Halloween looks coming um, since we're getting into October, but if there's anything else, oh, and a cool toned kind of all gray fall look I also have on my agenda to do for everybody. But if there are specific things you'd like to see, definitely comment below and let me know. Okay, enough delay. Let's get right into the tutorial. I hope you enjoy and thank you for watching. Bye. So first thing we always start with is primer and this is the Tarte Blurring Cream Primer. That's not the exact name but I always link all of my products below as long as they're still available in the store which this one is. So I'll It'll be in the description bar if you just hit show more underneath the video. And this one is incredible for blurring and really just evening out any texture. And then we're going to do a second primer. This is the Becca Bronzing Skin Perfector. I'm obsessed with this product. There really isn't a day that I do my makeup where I don't wear this. Um, I know I fell in love with it over the summer, but I'm planning on wearing this year round just because my face is very rarely as tan as the rest of my neck and body. So this is a great base to really just even out my skin tone before we apply any foundation or concealer or other products. So yeah, I'm obsessed. Sometimes I even mix it in with my foundation. That's another way to wear it. And then for under the eyes, we're going to use the Becca Brightening Under Eye Color Correct color corrector. Um, this is like a pale pink. I use this in every tutorial, so you guys are probably getting sick of seeing it, but too bad. It's the best. I use it all the time, especially when I'm not doing a full-on color correction with oranges and greens and lavenders. This is like a great interim um, product and it really helps with dark circles. For foundation, I'm going to combine two products, the Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream and the Shimmering Skin Perfector Liquid in Opal. Um, so the foundation is in the shade Noisette and then I add a little bit of the Shimmering Skin Perfector and with my IT Cosmetics uh, Velvet Foundation Brush, again these will all be linked below, I blend that together on the back of my hand and then just kind of press it into the skin all over my face followed by circular motions to really blend it out nicely. The reason I added the Shimmering Skin Perfector is because the Ultimate Coverage Complexion Cream is heavy and can be a little bit matte and I still wanted um, some, you know, healthy glow to the complexion. That's just my style. You could wear this all matte and leave out the Shimmering Skin Perfector and just wear the foundation. It's a beautiful formula and it's thick, so going into the cooler weather, it's definitely hydrating. And for concealer, I'm in love with the Smashbox Studio Skin 24-Hour Hydrating Concealer. Um, I'd say it's a close second in my um, daily arsenal to the um, Urban Decay Naked Basics Concealer. Um, it's not quite as full coverage as the Urban Decay Naked. Um, that would, that's what I would say is the only thing that makes the other one win over this one. But I love um, the range of shades that Smashbox has. I love the consistency. Um, it has almost like a cooling sensation when it first goes on. Um, a little gel-like, kind of like the Makeup Forever Ultra HD concealer. Anyway, so I put that all over under my eyes, my lids, my um, any areas where I want to highlight. And then I'm just taking a damp beauty sponge and blending that out to really get a seamless application. When you're using a thicker foundation like the Becca one that we used, I think it's helpful to use a wet sponge as opposed to just a dry brush. Um, if you're wearing a really lightweight 
foundation or like a BB or CC cream or something like that, or you're not wearing any foundation at all and you're just putting on a little bit of concealer, it's not as essential to use, you know, to go and take the time to wet the sponge and everything. But if you're going to wear a thicker foundation um, to really get the products to meld together beautifully, I think, I think this is worth the extra step. So again, just using kind of that pointier end and just dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. You're not really wiping. You don't want you don't want to streak the product across your face. You're just dabbing and letting the moisture help combine um, the two layers of products until you don't see any lines and everything feels well blended across the face. To set, we're going to use the Marc Jacobs um, Instamark Light Filtering Palette. I'm using number 40, and this is a Morphe kind of just angled utility brush and with the yellow shade I set all under my eye. Really look up so that you can make sure that that powder sets in the creases and also make sure to set your lids. This will help with blending uh, shadow when we get into the eye portion of the look. Um, so the more you dab and the more powder you use, the more your face is going to be set. So um, this really helps prevent creasing and prevent anything from moving or kind of running down the face throughout the day. Same thing with the area underneath the nose. I always set around um, the crease of my nose as well. And then to set the non-highlighted portions of the face, I'm using the Giorgio Armani um, Luminous Silk Powder Foundation and a big fat Morphe brush. And you can see that this is a little bit dark for me right now. This is kind of my summer color. I think this is 5.5. Anyway, it um, is where I set the rest of my face. So everywhere where we didn't highlight, everywhere where we didn't put that yellow Marc Jacobs powder is where we're going to put this um, powder foundation from Giorgio Armani. Always bring it down the neck. That really helps ensure you don't have a line on the edge of your face and that everything comes together and it looks like your natural complexion. And with the darker shade from the Marc Jacobs palette and a flat little almost square ended um, Morphe brush, I'm going to do a light contour on the nose. So just with powder on each side of the brush, I use one side to do the one side of the nose and then flip the brush and use the powder on the other side to do the other side of the nose. Leave a nice, um, thin, clean, uh, highlighted strip down the center of the nose. That's what will make it look more narrow. And then the darkness on the edges will draw it in. And to contour the rest of the face, I'm using the Becca, oh, I never remember the name of this product. I'll link it below. And kind of a short, stout Morphe brush that I just got recently in the monthly brush club shipment. And I'm just taking that into the hollows underneath the cheekbones. You can see it's not well blended yet, but don't worry. We're going to do a few other um, steps with a clean brush and then with a setting powder for the whole face that will blend this out. Again, these are kind of my summer tones, so I'm a little too pale for some of these shades, but we're going to make it work. It's just makeup, guys. If you aren't quite the right skin tone, there's always a fix to make everything blend together so you don't look patchy. A um, little bit on the edge of the chin, underneath the jawline, that's what will give you definition on the edge of your face. Have that nice chiseled um, edge of your jaw. And with a clean Morphe brush, that color is just from kind of leftover product from me having used the brush before, but I did not add any product to this brush. I'm just going to buff all around my face. Everywhere where we just put that contour powder to really help it seamlessly blend with our highlighted areas and create a more um, seamless finish. So this is the NARS um, setting powder that I use, all illuminating setting powder and a big fat Sigma brush. And this is kind of the final step to set the whole face. So I really, really, really brush that brush into the, the powder, which you'll see is kind of a hard, if you ever use this product, it's like a hard white slab and you just get as much powder on the brush as you can and just buff it all over the face. This will be kind of a final step to help blend everything in as you can see. All right, Violet Voss's Laura Lee Collaboration Palette. This palette is so beautiful, and it's great for fall. So with a blending Morphe brush, we're going to start with Pris Pot, which is kind of an orangey, um, warm transition shade, and I'm just going to buff this all throughout the crease, up toward the brow bone, across the entire eye. So back and forth, back and forth, and then circular motions to get a nice, even distribution of color. Then with Britches, which is in a similar color family, but a little bit darker, we're going to go over the same area. We're not going to bring it up quite as high as we did with Pris Pot, but this will help give um, nice layering to the shades and create a good foundation for blending when we get into some of the darker shades. So again, back and forth, back and forth, and then circular motions until it's well blended. 
in my videos, I never show the full length of blending that I do, just because it starts to get a little boring to watch, but um, just blend until it looks seamless. You don't want anything to look splotchy. The next shade we're going to use is a little bit darker and it's going to stay lower in the crease. And I'm going to use a Sigma E25 blender with whiskers, which is a little bit more brown. Um, and you can see I'm keeping it in the outer corner of the eye and then lower in the crease. I'm not bringing it in as far to the inner corner and then I'm kind of winging it out a little bit on the outer corner. It can be messy on the lid because we're going to put another color on the lid that'll kind of clean that up, um, but try to keep the center of the lid without any shadow on it if you can. Um, this brush is a little bit narrower than some of those fluffier blending brushes we started with, which is why I'm using this shape so that it gives you a little more control as you're trying to be more precise with where you're placing it. As you can see, I'm really keeping low in that crease. Um, opening your eye and angling the brush down into the socket will help um, keep that control. So then you do the same thing with the other side, kind of press it onto the outer corner of the eye and then drag it up into the crease um, and then blend back and forth, back and forth. Wing it out a little bit in the outer corner. It'll depend on your eye shape also, exactly how far out you want to take it, how deep your crease is. If, if you know you don't have much of a crease, you can create one. It really depends on your eye. So the more you practice, the more you get to know your face and find out what fits for you. And then with a flat Morphe brush, I'm going to take Mama Bird, which is this um, orangey kind of latte shade and just put that over the lid. Um, it goes with the other colors. All of these shades have been matte so we're really keeping with the full matte eye. I didn't want to do anything sparkly or glittery. I really wanted this to feel very everyday. Um, versatile, can go with different lips, can go with different outfits and not clash and sometimes when you have glitters it just kind of takes over. So back with the Sigma E25 blending brush just going back and forth over it again, no additional product. And then with a pencil brush, I'm going to take Bubs, which is kind of a deeper, almost grayish brown, and just put this in almost like a little triangular shape in the outer corner and into the crease a little bit, wing it out a little bit. Um, nothing too crazy. We're not going for a full smoky eye or anything. This is just to add a little bit of dimension and make sure the eyes feel um, big and wide. And then with, again, the E25, going over it again, no additional product, just to blend it out and make sure everything is joined together well. Um, we're going to use that same color to line in a minute. Just going to get a flat definer brush, there it is, and a little bit of that color bubs, and this is a very, very thin definer. Um, thin in that the bristles aren't, aren't, are not going to make a really thick line, and I'm staying super close to the lashes, and I'm not going all the way into the inner corner, almost, but you want it to be a little bit thicker on the outside edge, and we're not doing really a wing, so it's okay if the outer edge of that liner blends in with the rest of the shadow. That's a nice, softer, everyday look, and that's what we're going for. A little mascara with the Tarte Tartiste Lash Paint. Obsessed. I can't say enough good things about this mascara. We'll get into that maybe again in another video, but today we're wearing falsies, so I'm just doing one quick coat of mascara on both. You can see though, even just this one quick coat, like look how black it is and how much thicker it makes the lashes almost instantly. This mascara is incredible. I can't believe, you know, it took this long to make a mascara that good. And then we're going to use these lashes right here. They're either House of Lashes or Violet Voss. The two brands make very similar styles, so I'll link it below. I can't remember which ones these are. And then to do brows, the Hourglass Arch Brow Definer in the color Blonde. And brows are maybe one of the most boring things to watch on a video, but I'll go through the first one and then the second one we'll just speed through. So I just start at the front using the flat angled chiseled edge of the pencil and kind of create the bottom line of the arch first. Um, I follow my natural hairs, but it's really um, once you have that line, you can see where the gaps are, where your natural brow growth doesn't really make that shape in full. Um, so I draw a vertical line at the front, kind of mimicking little hair strokes in the front just to fill in. Um, you know, that beginning part, portion of the brow that you want to be the most prominent, and then come up over the brow bone to create an arch. Keep in mind the highest point of your arch should be wherever the outer edge of the colored part of your eye would be if you put a pencil straight up from it when you're looking forward. 
Once the whole thing is filled in, I just brush it out with the spoolie. Brushing it out is really important so it looks natural. And then with a little Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel, which is like brow glue. It's the best. It, your stuff will not move once it's dry. Just use a little bit of that. Um, I did the other brow, kind of skipped over it, but you can see how it comes together. A little brow gel to lock it in place, and voila. Next, I took a little bit of that Bubs color, again, with the flat definer brush, and just put a little bit on the very outer edge of the lower lid. Um, you want it to bridge up with the top line and maybe not go further than like a third of the way across your eye. And then with a pencil brush, I'm sorry, the camera cut off my view because I got too close to my mirror, but this is just a lighter brown from the palette, doesn't really matter which one, to buff it out with the pencil brush. And then with a nude creamy eyeliner, I'm just going to line the waterline to create a really open-eyed, awake look. You, this step is optional. You could also use black here to deepen the whole look if you wanted to. Um, but this is the Smashbox Always Sharp Coal Liner in Bare. All right, and then just mascara on the lower lashes. I'm using the same Tarte Tarteiste Lash Paint. Um, I am a huge advocate for doing your lower lashes. I know there's some makeup artists who don't. They like that kind of open-eyed look, but I just feel like my eyes look incomplete without that definition on the bottom lash line. And I also have pretty thick lower lashes, so it works well for my face. Next for blush, we're going to use MAC Copper Tone. This is a beautiful matte warm blush and an angled Morphe brush to apply it. And you can just see how that pulls the whole look together. It has hints of pink in it, but it's very brown based and it's super matte. So you're not going to get any shimmer on the cheeks from this blush. So it really goes well with the eye look that we've put together here. For highlight, I'm going full tilt. This is the Jouer um, new highlighter in the color Topaz. So beautiful, so pigmented. I actually, in hindsight, might have picked a slightly softer highlight than this one. This one is like pow when you first put it on. I actually had to shake my brush off a little extra. It's beautiful. It's a really great highlighter, but I hadn't used it yet, so I was really excited to try it out. Um, so a little bit down the center of the nose and on the tip of the nose, center of the forehead, top of the cupid's bow to give the lip a little definition, and then a little bit on the chin. To highlight the brow bone, I want to keep the eye matte. I'm using the color Basic from that Laura Lee palette, which is a matte, very light, warm highlight. It's beautiful for the brow bone. I love this color. And for lips, we're going to go with Urban Decay's um, Gwen Stefani Collection Liner in Ex-Girlfriend. This is a great nude. I think I raved about this in one of my spring or summer favorite videos when I first picked it up from a haul. Um, really creamy, really pigmented. And then I'm going to use Urban Decay's Safe Word Comfort Matte Lipstick. If you tune into my next video that I'm going to post, I will keep this look on and swap out a whole bunch of my favorite fall lip colors um, from nudes to browns to berries. So um, stay tuned for that video next up. But this color Safe Word is a great transitional shade for fall. A little bit of setting spray from Urban Decay to lock this in for the, uh, the long haul throughout the day. And this look is complete. I hope you enjoyed. Happy fall, everyone. Go pick a pumpkin, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.